All right, I want to do a couple of little examples of simplification so that we can get an idea of the kind of rules that we can apply and how we can apply them and, and how we can make a complicated Boolean function simpler, what it looks like and what our sort of targets are in terms of how simple we can make it. Uh, let's start with a simple, fairly straightforward example, uh, a function of three variables, uh, <laughs> a, b, and c, a function of three variables, a, b, and c, focus that, uh, which is going to be equal to, uh, let's do a, b, or a, b, c, or uh, b, c. Three variables. Three variables, three terms, three product terms. We call these a product term because it's uh, two terms, uh, two literals um, anded together or multiplied together, I guess, if you want to think about it that way. Remember, and and multiply are sort of the same, but not quite or and addition are sort of the same and not quite. Uh, so we call these product terms and we call this whole thing together a sum of products. Uh, so what we're gonna do is simplify this. Now we can look at these first two terms and we can say there's something common between these terms and we have this distribution rule. I'll bring in my rules again uh, so you can remember what these rules are. We have this distributive rule that says that if we have uh, two terms that look like this and there is a common factor between them, we can factor that out and we can bring that out into the brackets. So what does that look like in the context of our example? So we have AB or ABC. We can see that AB is common, but the, the sort of rule that we have is um, Y or Z equals x, y, or x, z. This is our distribution rule. It doesn't quite apply, does it? So we can actually invoke another rule that uh, allows us to have something else left over here to have the y. So uh, we have a rule that looks like this. If x is anded with 1, we get the x back again. Now, why would we want to do this? Well, what this does is it gives us something to distribute out. Uh, it looks like this. We can first say this is a, B, anded with 1, and we can OR that with A, B, anded with C, and then we've got B, C to deal with later on. Now, I'm being a little bit overt with this. Most of you will probably see what's coming here, is that if we invoke this rule, so and then we should actually name the rules that we're using so that we can follow the derivation. So this is uh, the rule called identity. That's going to be a rule that we're going to use later, the distribution rule. Then we can see that this is like x, y, and this is like x, z. And so we can take these two together and we can use a distribution rule. This is going to be, I'm going to write these a bit bigger, a, b, 1, or c. Or with b, c. Okay, and this is distribution. And that's not bad. Uh, we went from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven literals to one, two, three, four, five literals. That's good. But we've gone from two levels. We and each of these independently and then we or them all together. That's two operations. Now we have three operations. We have to or these two together, and it with this, and this together, and then or it with that. So now we have three logic levels to contend with instead of two. So eh, I don't know that much simpler. Plus, if we look at this pair of terms, uh, we can see that you can probably do the same kind of thing as in this pair of terms. But we've gotten rid of that. So what do we do? There's nothing, there's nothing left to sort of do distribution with. So let's back up a little bit and let's recognize that this AB, ABC, and this ABC, BC are both the same derivation. So we could take ABC and pull the BC out of it and we'd have the same kind of result. Wouldn't, again, wouldn't be much simpler. But we have another rule that we can invoke that if we look carefully at, we might be able to make use of. Here, if we, uh, we can use either of these terms, the idempotent rule that says, if we have any term, we can just duplicate it. X is the same as X or X. And if we have any, any literal in a term, we can duplicate it. X is the same as X and X. Uh, that's gonna be useful here. Let's go back to our set of rules. Uh, because what we can do is we can just duplicate this term, right? We can say AB or ABC or ABC or BC. 
that looks weird. So let's let's like, let's try that. Let's start this derivation again. F of a and c is a b or a b c or b c. Now again, who knows where this came from? Maybe there was a uh, a plain English description of a problem that that this is what you have to solve. But we're starting with this. Um, our first derivation, we got somewhere, but we feel like we can maybe do better because there's some simplification here that we couldn't do. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to start by duplicating this ABC term so that we can use it here and we can use it here. Now, again, this idea of duplicating of terms is not something that happens in traditional algebra, but it is something that happens uh, in Boolean algebra. So we can just say this is the same as AB or a, b, c, or a, b, c, or b, c. And this is because of the idempotent rule. It's always a good idea to sort of make a note of the rules you're using so you can look back in your derivation and say, yeah, that makes sense. Then, based on the idea that we had before of pulling this term out of this term and leaving it with one or c, and you'll see there's more we can do here as well, uh, one or c, what we can do is we can say, in fact, we can do that twice. We can say this is equivalent to a, b, one or c, and this is equivalent to uh, b, c, one or c. Uh, one or a, that's right, because the one is here, the a is here. So let's, uh, yeah, one or a. So this is b, c, we pulled out one or a, and this is a, b, we pulled out one or c. So that's a little bit better, and that's not bad. Now, what happens if we add or, or one with a variable? Maybe there's a way we can get rid of that. Well, if we go back to our list of identities, we can say that if you or one with a variable, it turns into a one. That variable goes away. It's the annihilator. It gets rid of information. So we can actually do that here as well. A, B, one, or C actually just turns into A, B, one. Oh, by the way, this is distribution. And this turns into B, C, one. Because the one or A is just one. One or C is just one. And then we can look back and we have a rule that says if we won, if we and with one, we get the original number, uh, original value back again. This is called the identity. So we say this is annihilator. So we've annihilated the C value and the A value. And, and I got to remember how to spell annihilator. H-I-L-A-T-O-R. And then we can use the rule that says uh, this is just A, B, and this is just B, C. And this is called uh, identity. So this is the process we can use, and it's a little bit counterintuitive because if we start with a function that looks like uh, multiplication and addition, there's only so far we can get. And already we have to do a couple things uh, that is a little bit weird. Pulling a one out is fine, but then one plus C should be just one plus C. Uh, but one or C is just one, and one and AB is just AB. So we can get from this down to here, we can get rid of this ABC term in this way. Uh, there is actually a simpler way to do this. Uh, if we start one more time, I'm going to uh, rip this off and fold it in half, and then you'll see if we start one more time with F equals AB or ABC or BC, there's another rule, which again is a little bit counterintuitive, uh, called absorption. Uh, this is a rule that we can invoke if we have a situation where we have two terms, one of which uh, is further specified than the other. So if we have x or x, y, so this one's a bit more specific. This is anytime x is true, this is when x and y are true together. If this term is a bit more specific, the, the, the annihilator rule says that that goes away. It just disappears. The x, y, the more specific term goes away, which makes sense. If this is true, anytime x is true, then it's also true when x, y is true. So this x, y doesn't add any extra information, and it is absorbed into the x term. Now, we can look at that here. We have a, b, or 
ABC. And this is the same as uh, if we treat this AB like the X and we treat this ABC like the X and then the Y, what we get is X or XY. And that tells us that the XY just goes away. So we can actually, in a single step, simplify all the way down to where we had the first time. This is AB or BC by absorption. Absorption. Because the ABC term is absorbed into the AB term. It's equivalently absorbed into the BC term. That also works because we can treat the BC as the X and the ABC as the XY. And we see how that works logically, right? What happens when you're doing absorption is you're actually factoring this AB this into this ABC. We pull the AB out by distribution. And what we're left with is one or something, which is just one. Because anytime you have two terms, one of which is always true, the or of something that's always true is always true. And then we can complete our proof. So this is the idea with simplification. Is we start with some function and we do some sequence of events to try to get to some place that's simpler. And in this case, we did get simpler, right? We had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven instances of a variable and one, two logic layers, right? All of these AND gates can happen at the same time and then the big OR happens together. Here we have one, two, three, four literals and two logic levels. So we haven't uh, changed the number of logic levels, but we have significantly improved uh, the number of literals we have to use, which means the gates will be smaller uh, and that will make it a uh, cheaper implementation. So this is an example of the kind of simplification we're going to do. And all of these rules will be invoked multiple times whenever we do any of these simplifications. So we have uh, annihilator, identity, idempotent, complement, double negative, absorption, commutative, distributive, associative, and de Morgan. All of these rules you can just invoke as they are. Uh, but I could, in an assignment, ask you to prove any of these rules. And then in that case, you would have to prove the rule using all the other rules. So we just sort of proved absorption using uh, distribution and annihilator. Um, so that's an example of proving a rule using the other rules that are there. Uh, so that's an example then in general of simplification. They're going to have a lot more interesting simplification problems. That one was pretty straightforward. Uh, in the next video, I'm going to go through some theory, uh, some names of things and the way that we can structure them so that we can use a simplification technique that is guaranteed to give us the simplest answer given certain constraints.